Hey guys, we're checking out the Evelo Dash Folding Electric Bike. This thing is pretty special because it's got a mid-drive motor, a Gates carbon belt drive, an internally geared hub, fenders, lights, a rear rack, hydraulic disc brakes, a color display. There's a lot to love about it, and it's pretty comfortable too, even though we don't have a suspension fork. Um, this is one of the areas where I think they're trying to keep it lightweight and what I've noticed about a lot of those smaller suspension forks for folding bikes is they just don't offer a, a lot of travel and they're not super adjustable. They do make a difference, but again, that's the trade-off. I weighed this bike earlier. It's about 50 pounds. The battery is about four and a half pounds. And I think the mid-drive motor is like six and a half pounds, but of course I didn't take it off to check. This is a, is a more of a sophisticated kind of a refined folder than I usually see. And the price point is $31.99 USD. So you are paying more. If you look at the frame, you'll notice that some of the cables are internally routed. So it's really clean, which is great when you fold it. You don't want to have stuff getting snagged on it. There, There's no like magnet or strap or bungee that's going to keep this thing folded. You might want to have a, a Benji of your own to use and put a towel in between because the, the finish on this is just so beautiful. It's dark blue, it's glossy, and the decals are pretty minimal. So it looks clean, and I appreciate that. Really wide main tube right here, and then there's this folding clamp area. It protrudes a little bit. I wasn't hitting my knees on it or anything, but you, you notice that it's there. And part of the reason they've gone overboard with that and added some gussets and extra tubing is so they could get this really high max weight rating, 275 pounds. Most of the time, folding electric bikes are rated at 200 pounds, maybe 250. So 275 was very impressive. Back here at the rack, it's rated at 15 kilograms, which is a little bit low. I'm used to seeing like 25 kilograms. So again, 33 pounds versus 55 pounds but it's a folding bike and it's positioned far enough back that it's not going to collide with the saddle. You could add a trunk bag here, maybe panniers. I wouldn't get too long though, because there really isn't a pannier blocker and there's no bungee loop down here to, to clasp it to, or to keep it from like flopping around a little bit. So again, I understand it's kind of minimalist. It's a cool design. It sort of hangs out over here and it's got the rear light mounted. We've got plastic fenders with the wraparound supports. So they don't have like pokey end pieces that could scratch you when you're folding it, when you're lifting it good choice on those. They're extra wide too, and they're giving you coverage for these wider tires. So these are the CST operative. They're 20 inches by 2.4 inches wide. That is above average. At first I was like, are these plus size tires? They're gonna give you this extra stability. They're gonna give you some extra comfort. And because they're wider, they're, they're actually a little bit taller and that gives you a lower attack angle, which helps to smooth out some of these cracks and bumps that you might encounter along the way. I'm a big fan and, and they help to overcome not having a suspension fork. There's also no suspension seat post. And I think it would be difficult to add one because they've got a shim and it's kind of a wider post diameter. I'll talk about that in a minute. 13 gauge spokes front and rear, extra sturdy, giving you that extra uh, weight capacity, and then fairly wide rims to support these wider tires. One thing I noticed about the tires is that the pressure rating, it seems high. They say 85 to 100 PSI. I would have guessed 30 to 50 PSI. In fact, I only have these at 40 PSI right now, so I'm not really following the instructions, but they, they already feel pretty full, and I didn't want to go so high that it just felt like a rock or something. They've optimized the drivetrain so that the bike feels pretty comfortable and natural. These are standard length, 170 millimeter crank arms, which I was surprised about. Sometimes, you know, the bottom bracket's a little bit lower on a folding bike because the wheels are smaller. And with a longer crank arm, you could get a pedal strike, but it seems like they're high enough here. And that's gonna give you a more natural pedal cadence. It's not gonna feel like a little clown bike where you're spinning super fast. Uh, 60 tooth Gates carbon drive, chain ring right here, 26 tooth cog in the rear. And you'll notice there's no derailleur hanging down. It's just very clean. It's quiet. These belt drives tend to be very durable, even more long lasting than chains, according to some of the chops that I've talked to, but they require a special frame. So we've got a cutaway right here. So you actually take that chunk out if you needed to replace the belt someday. And again, to have such a high weight rating for a bike that's, you know, custom and, and compromised a little bit, having that extra piece right there. With the Sturmey Archer internally geared five speed back here, you've got five gears to choose from and you can actually shift at standstill, which is nice because occasionally you'll be climbing a hill and, oh, I got to stop real quick because there's a car or just something unexpected happens. 
and then you're starting in a high gear and that can be really uncomfortable. You might almost have to like walk your bike or ride sideways to get going again. But with the internally geared hub, it, it overcomes some of that. And again, there's just no derailleur. It's, it's really clean, it's nicely done. And then they have a horizontal dropout because that's how you keep the chain tight. A 31.8 millimeter seat post, that is extra long, 450 millimeters versus 300 or 350 millimeters. The quick release clamp is a little bit short. It, I had to get my fingers in there and pull but on the other hand, by not having it be super long, you're not going to snag your pants or your dress or whatever once it's set. I, I still think it would be nice to have a longer one and be easier to work with. We've got this Freshia gel saddle from Selle Royale, and there's even like a little accessory clip below, so you, maybe you could add another light. A lot of times, companies don't do that because people will be wearing a jacket and it can block the light. So I think the rear light position on this is, is just fine. And then up front, we have a telescoping height folding stem. So it actually goes higher than this, and then the handle bar it's a low rise you can swivel it forward or back to extend or bring in that reach so there's really quite a few fit options this only comes in one frame size like most folding bikes and i think it's only in in blue this dark blue it's kind of a unisex pretty handsome design and i noticed that the, even the brakes and stuff some of the the logos are, are taken off i think they're trying to be really clean and the grips are not locking so you can actually twist these out of position if you want to um, but you know, they feel comfortable enough and, and they get, they kind of get the job done. That's one area where it's like, well, they could be a little nicer, but the half grip twist shifter is very convenient. I think, especially for people who aren't cycling regularly and they're not familiar with like how the trigger shifters work. This is just so intuitive. You know, it's easy to shift. You can see what gear you're in through that optical window. It's just, again, you don't even have to be moving. You can shift the gears, that's awesome. And then over here we have a trigger throttle and button pad and everything. It's fairly reachable and it seems like things are fairly well protected here. Very big screen, this is a Dapu color LCD screen. I'm always like keeping an eye on this when I fold the bike, maybe putting a towel over it or just, just being extra careful. It seems durable enough, but it is a folding bike. So take that for what it's worth. Before we turn it on, uh, I'm gonna flip the bike around and show you the brakes. So you can see these three finger hydraulic brake levers, very easy to actuate and they're actually adjustable so you can bring them in a little bit if you have smaller hands. In addition to controlling the physical brake pads, you also have motor inhibitors on both of them. So anytime you actuate the brakes, you're cutting the motor power. You're not gonna be fighting the system, which is great. It also activates the rear lights. So they go kind of bright, even if the lights aren't on, and that's gonna keep you extra safe. I appreciate that. And then the hardware is 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear, which is kind of a starting point on most bikes. It's not the biggest rotor, but when you have such a small wheel, you get a great mechanical advantage. I think these are just fine. And then we have dual piston calipers, front and rear. Again, no branding, that might be a cheaper part, or it might be purposefully removed to keep the bike looking really clean. Here are the folding platform pedals from Welgo. They're easy to fold. They're not super stiff, but they're, they're not the cheapest ones either. You could always replace these with metal folding platforms or just standard pedals. I think that's, that's just fine for what it is. And then the kickstand, they've got it center mounted, which works pretty well. Sometimes the folding bikes will have like a, you know, a double leg kickstand, but it, it adds weight and adds this lower st strike point that you can encounter. Uh, in case you notice this metal piece, that's actually to support the bike when you fold it so that the bottom bracket and the motor casing don't get marred up. And then if we deploy this kickstand, I do want to point out that you can get pedal lock. So if you're walking the bike backwards or you spin the pedals, it can kind of get locked up and that's one of the little compromises. The motor here, this is that, that Dapu lightweight mid-drive offering up to 70 newton meters of torque. 350 to 750 watt output. To me, that's like a really high rating on paper. In practice, it feels a little bit gentler than that. It's very quiet, I'm sure it's very efficient. And I was able to get up a hill without pedaling, just using a throttle, but it doesn't feel as powerful as like a Bosch motor or a Broza motor, one of the performance like mountain motors that I'm, I'm testing on other bikes sometimes. It measures your rear wheel speed, you got a sensor here and then a magnet, which keep an eye on that. If that gets bumped out of position, you could get a read error on the display. And your pedal cadence here and your pedal torque, it, it, it's a very dynamic feeling motor. It's, it's not like out of control or too peppy. If anything, it's more of a lighter, kind of a smoother feel. But in the display, you can actually adjust the settings like eco, normal, or like high power profile. And of course, the higher assist level and the higher profile you're using, the faster you're gonna drain that battery pack. Before we fold the bike, I wanna point out these little covers. The left side has a power button, probably wakes up the battery or maybe gives you a, a readout of how full it is. 
And on the right, we have the charging port. I love that it's not low. It's not gonna get bumped by the pedals or anything. You don't have to bend over so far. You can charge the battery on the bike, which I love, but the battery is removable and you have to fold the bike to do that. See this little handle right here? Pull the battery pack out. It's a cute little battery. This thing is 36 volt, 10.5 amp hours. The bike comes with some basic tools, a bunch of guides, including one for the Gates carbon belt drive. A two amp, pretty standard charger, weighs about a you know, pound and a half, and then this nice magnetic box. The dash is longer than the older Quest folding model, but it actually folds up pretty tight. There isn't like a magnetic mechanism or a strap or anything, so I would probably use a towel and a bungee to keep this thing from rattling around too much. It gets pretty small. I did take the seat post off because it, it's pretty long at 450 millimeters. It just was touching touching the bottom and protruding a little bit. So if you really wanna get this thing tight, maybe you have to stow that separately. To power on the bike, we just press this power button on the button pad. Gives you a nice Evelo readout. It's a pretty standard display, but it's color, it's fairly large. And we've got a couple of infographics here, like a speedometer at the top and then a power meter which is neat, you don't always see that. And then there's current speed in the middle, so we're at zero miles per hour right now. Assist level, it appears to start in assist level one each time, and that throttle is hot. You know, just be careful if you're hopping on this thing and you bump it, it could, it could get away from you a little bit. But we can arrow this down to zero if we want to, and then we're gonna have a bike that just has some lights and a readout and still has throttle power. So it's almost like a scooter in that sense. I like it when companies give you access to the throttle with full power, regardless of what assist level you're on. Evelo did a great job there. I wanna show you the headlight right now. If I press the power button, the display is gonna dim a little bit and then we get the light icon. And there we go, that's the Kendo Plus by Spininga. I feel like where it's positioned, it can't aim down super far because the, the fender kind of blocks it. You know, if we look from back here, it's very close to that fender. Uh, to me, this is more of a B scene headlight than a light the path headlight. I think it's rated at 30 lux. It's not super bright. It doesn't have side cutouts, but it does point where you steer. And I'd rather have a light than not. So the headlight, the rear light, I'm gonna show you the, the brakes as well. We'll, we'll turn the lights off here and then pull the brake lever and that rear light activates just like you'd want. Now down here we have five bars on a battery infographic. Each bar represents 20%. It's not super precise. I prefer to have more bars or an actual percentage readout. And then we have like a trip time, trip distance, and then odometer down here. Pressing the set button doesn't really do anything. I was surprised. Sometimes it cycles through and you get average speed or max speed or something, but I haven't been able to figure that out. If we hold the minus button, we get walk mode, which could be handy if it's all loaded up with gear. There we go. It seemed like it was starting. Maybe we have to be on assist level one for it to work or one of the other assist levels. There we go. Okay. Now the bike's pushing itself along. And if we hold the set button, we get into a settings menu, which is really good. There's general, advanced, HMI. I think that's just like feedback about the hardware and then you can save or exit. I'm gonna go through some of these real quick. So you can clear the trip, you can adjust the backlight brightness, the speed limit. I think you can lower this. You can't raise it, but there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, you know, I wanna maximize my range with the battery or I wanna feel more, more stable. So you can take it down to around 12 and a half Wheel size, units, we're in miles per hour. Battery voltage, mode, and then we save and exit. I think we're ready to ride. I like to do most of my tests in assist level five so I can really experience the motor power and hear it. But again, this thing is so quiet. We'll see how it sounds. I was asking the folks at Avello how fast that motor can spin, uh, which is sort of the like max RPM. They said it, I think it's like 98, so a little bit lower. A lot of the kind of mountain bike or road bike mid drives, they'll tend to offer up to 120 RPM, which means you can spin super fast. Well, since we only have five gears on the Sturmy Archer and it's geared kind of high, I feel like that's just fine. But for fun, I'm gonna take it to the lowest gear and then I'm gonna spin as fast as I can and see what happens. Not bad. 
for a little folding bike, you know, I, I think it does just fine. I'm gonna start with the throttle, give it full power. I'm in gear two. The idea is you can hear how it sounds. This time, it's still in the highest level of assist. I'm gonna pedal gently to see how responsive that torque sensor is. Yeah, it's very dynamic. When I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, it doesn't give me a lot of power. I'm gonna go off-road now and just see how the bike sounds, if anything's rattling around. Very impressive. Yeah, the fenders and everything. There's no rattling. You did a good job. Not bad. It's a hill. I'm not even pedaling. No brake test. Nice. Yeah. Feels pretty stable. Those 20 by 2.4 inch tires. Well guys, that's the Evelo Dash. I had a fun time out here on the docks today and I was really impressed. I mean, they're doing a lot of special stuff. Avelo has been around since 2011. I've covered a bunch of their stuff over the years and they, they have a really good warranty. I think it's like four year comprehensive, bunch of cool accessory packages back at the site. And back at electricbikerview.com, I've got all the specs that I measured by hand, a cool comparison tool so you could see how some of the other folding bikes stack up against this. And there's a forum too, so you could see what actual owners think. They, they weren't just out there for a day like me. Maybe they've got some tips on trunk bags, panniers, and uh, other things. Maybe, maybe it's like, here's a good bungee strap for when you fold it, or tips and stuff like that. I love you. Uh, ride safe, have fun out there, and we'll see you next time.